Welcome to another R config tutorial. In this video, we're focusing on a new integration feature. After the success of our Zabbix integration, where you can sync hosts from the popular Zabbix network monitoring platform to R configs configuration manager, we've now added support for Netbox. If you're not familiar, Netbox is a leading tool for modeling and documenting modern networks. In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through how to set up the integration, build it, and then run it as a recurring task. Before we dive in, I want to highlight our comprehensive documentation. You can head over to docs.rconfig.com and navigate to the integration section. There, you'll find everything you need to set up and deploy the Netbox integration. Now, let's jump into the feature. As you can see, I already have a Netbox instance set up. The API and token are already configured and ready. I've set up five devices, and we're going to take a closer look at them. There are a few important things to keep in mind with these devices. First, they need to be active. Second, they should have an IPv4 address assigned. And lastly, they need to have various tags configured. We won't cover every required tag in this video, but you can find all the details in our documentation. Now let's switch over to our rconfig v7 professional instance and try out the integration. To get started, navigate to the settings and then go to the integration section. From there, click on configure next to the netbox integration. The general process involves a few steps. You configure the API, extract the devices from the netbox instance in a raw format, transform and map the data, and then load it into a staging table. Once the data is in staging, you can validate it before loading it into the production R config device table. And once all of that's done, you can set it up to run as a recurring task. Now, looking at the screen here, you can see we already have the Netbox integration configured. The key things you need to enter are the integration name, the base URL, which should include the slash API path and the API token. Once you've added those, you can click the test button to check that your connection and credentials are working. You'll see the successful test results right here. The test credentials button checks if you can pull data from your Netbox instance. On our system, we've got one user but your instance might return more. You can also set up tag filters to make sure only devices with certain tags get imported. After the configuration is validated, we move on to the Extract tab. In this tab, there are three main tasks you need to do. First, run the extract. Second, run the transform and mapping. And third, load the data into staging. So, the first thing we do is click the Extract button and wait for the devices to load. Once they're loaded, review the data, and if needed, you can open the devices directly from this table. Next, we run the transform and mapping task. Give it a moment, and you'll start to see updates in the status column. This column tells you whether or not a device can be imported. The transform and mapping process is checking that the tags on the device are valid and that they have the correct values. If there's an error, the device won't be imported, but you can always go back, fix the errors, and rerun the extract as many times as you need. Once you're satisfied, click the Load to Staging button. This will map, transform, and load the devices into the staging table where you can do a final review. The staging table shows the devices that are ready to be moved into the production device table. You can visually inspect them to make sure everything looks good before loading them into production. Now. Let's talk about the two buttons at the top of this table. The assessment button runs through the steps we've just done, but it doesn't actually load the data into the production table. The deployment button, on the other hand, runs through all the steps and includes loading the data into production. So let's go ahead and run the deployment. After a few moments, you'll see that the staging table is cleared out, and now the devices are in the main production device table. Let's take a look at those. Navigate to the Devices table, and here you'll find the imported devices. You'll notice a link icon on the imported devices. When you open one of them, you'll see the link icon again on the device page. And you'll also have a new button 
that lets you open the device in NetBox. If all the tags and parameters are correct, the device will automatically start backing up. Finally, let's go over how to set up a scheduled task. Once you've gone through the whole process and everything is working as expected, you can schedule the integration to run on a recurring basis. To do this, go to the Scheduled Tasks section and create a new task. Choose Integration Job, give it a name and description, and click Next. Select the integration you want to schedule. Then choose how often you want it to run. And finalize the task. In this tutorial, we covered how to set up, configure, and run the new NetBox integration in R config. We walked through the process of extracting, transforming, and loading devices, as well as validating the data and scheduling the integration as a recurring task. With these steps, you can seamlessly sync and manage your network devices from NetBox within R config. Be sure to check out our detailed documentation for any additional information.